शंकर जय भयंकर जय भयंकर पार्वती शंकर पार्वती शंकर शंभो शंकर शंभो शंकर जय जय शंकर जय जय शंकर जय भयंकर जय भयंकर पार्वती शंकर पार्वती शंकर शंभो शंकर शंभो शंकर स्वर्गस्थितिलय स्वर्गस्थितिलय कारण 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 स्वर्गस्थितिलय कारण कारण स्थितिलय कारण कारण सर्ग स्थितिलय कारण कारण मृत्युंजय गण मृत्युंजय गण नायक 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 मृत्युंजय गण नायक नायक मृत्युंजय नायक नायक मृत्युंजय गण नायक नायक मृत्युंजय गण नायक नायक उमापते शिव उमापते शिव शंकर 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 उमापते शिव शंकर शंकर उमापते शिव शंकर शंकर उमापते शिव शंकर शंकर उमापते शिव शंकर शंकर गंगाधर जग दीश्वर ईश्वर गंगाधर जग ईश्वर ईश्वर गंगाधर जग दीश्वर ईश्वर गंगाधर जग ईश्वर जय जय शंकर जय जय शंकर जय भयंकर जय भयंकर पार्वती शंकर पार्वती शंकर शंभो शंकर शंभो शंकर सहनावतु सहनौमनु सह वीर तेजस्वीतमस्तुमाशावै ओ जाता 
sages by the shrutis and what does the shruti how does the shruti define brahman what is the definition of brahman yes what is the definition of brahman satyam satyam jnanam anantam that which is the receptacle of all that is the is belongs to only one thing who is that Brahman, also known as Ishwara. What are the first two letters of Ishwara? <laughs> Ish. <laughs> That's the only is. Everything else is as though is. Correct? Yeah. And ultimately, the self is revealed to be also this Ishwara because all that is is Ishwara. So how can be the self different? What is the first letter of Ishwara? I. Kya baat hai? <laughs> what is the first letter of Ishwara? I. So that I alone is revealed as Ishwara. It's very simple. All that is is Ishwara. So when I say flower is, you know, pot is, ornament is, cat is, hat is, rat is, all that is, all those small, small is is to speak. Or mostly is not, correct? Yeah. The is quickly, the is that we know quickly becomes is not. That is the only <laughs> is that we know. And the only is that doesn't become is not is anantam satyam, brahman ishvara. Anantam means limitless. Limitlessness includes time. We saw that the time is, is, is also a manufactured reality. So the limitlessness is what is includes time. So it's free of time. An is that never is not. An is that is never subject to ending is called Brahman. That is the only is that is not subject to ending. Body is, body gone. You know, <coughs> mind is, before you say mind is, you say never mind. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> mind gone. Senses is, senses are gone, you know. That's why as one grows older, you keep, keep the salt shaker by the food, right by the food, you know. Before you need one katori of dal, katori means one container, small uh, serving container of dal and a pinch of salt. Now you need a little pinch of dal because that's all you can digest and a katori of salt because the taste buds have worn out. Jarayanti Tejaha, the sharpness of the taste buds wear out, meaning the senses are also gone. Senses have become senseless and so that that is also gone. 
But the one who says, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, that is who? I. That I is the only is that is never gone. And therefore the I is Ishvara, really. That I is all pervasive. It is there in every, every body, every mind, every, you know, senses. And without a body also that I exists. And thankfully we have a body. So we can talk, we can laugh, we can, you know, have fun, we can teach, we can listen to the teaching. This is a good thing. And they don't say, I, I wish I didn't have a body. What will you do if you didn't have a body? You would just be <laughs> hanging around is. <laughs> and is who cannot say, I am. That's what it is. Yeah. So therefore, this, this body is a plus to the is. Because the body is a superimposition on that is. Yeah. The body is a superimposition. The mind is a super, superimposition. Prana is a superimposition. Everything is a plus. That is, that is I. And that I is infinite. So, infinite plus body is what? Infinite. Infinite. Infinite minus body is what? Infinite. Infinite. Infinity is that where all the plus and minuses may as well just mathematics wraps up its suitcase and goes out, goes out the door. That is the meaning of the word infinity. That is the meaning of infinity. There is no plus. You can say infinity plus hundred. It is still infinite. Infinity minus ten thousand still infinite. <coughs> so when we say that this Brahman is everything, then we have to really look at what this everything, what the status of this everything is. So the that which is, is called the basis of everything. And the Sanskrit word for basis is Adhishthana. And that which is everything is called Aropa. Aropa means that which is a superimposed upon something without undergoing any change. Because there are many kinds of superimpositions. You know, we have to be very careful. One is called, you know, Parinami. Parinami means it becomes, the, the it undergoes a change. The cause when it gives rise to the effect. A cause when it gives rise to the effect and undergoes a change, it is called Parinami Karanam. Karanam means cause. Parinami means it is subject to change, Parinama, change. So, for example, the milk... You know what you do to the milk? You heat it up a little bit and have some yogurt starter and you mix it in the milk and you keep it in a nice warm place. In the winter you have to put it in an oven with the light on. And then the next morning what does it become? Yogurt. yogurt. Yeah. Here in this country they have one special yogurt maker. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Rama. That's so I don't it's so easy. Here they will make a technology out of everything. Yeah. It's so easy, but they have a yogurt maker. Anyhow, never mind, you know. That is for uh, what is that? Uh, uh, you know, there is uh, all these books, no? The, that comes, uh, do it yourself books and all these. So it's for those people who don't have time to read how to make yogurt, they have a yogurt maker, whatever it is. You put in the milk and the starter in the yogurt maker or in the oven. Next day, it is yogurt. Then if you say, oh, I forgot to save some milk for my coffee. Now, come on, let me change this back. Do you think it's going to change back? No. This is called Parinami Karanam. That cause which turns into the effect. This is what it is called. And that is the only kind of cause that in the world that we are familiar with. We are only familiar with Parinami Karanam. Because the cause is affected. And then the effect is effected <laughs> out of a cause that is affected or afflicted. Somehow the cause undergoes a change. Generally we are familiar with that. Like a seed. You put the seed in water, what happens? It sprouts. And then you put the sprout in the, in the ground and it grows. And then you say, I want the seed now. It's not going to turn into seed. Because it has already, is well on its way to what? Sprouting. Becoming a tree, becoming a bush, becoming a plant, whatever it is. And so therefore, we have to see this very clearly. Is that generally we have this kind of parinami, karanam only that we are used to. 
but there is also a possibility possibility even in our realm of experience of a cause that doesn't undergo a change like gold and ornament correct mm. the shine of mm. the ornament is what the shine belongs to ornament or gold gold, gold. Mm. the weight mm. of the ornament mm. is really the weight of gold every jeweler knows this you don't know it that's why you know in this country they say put all your gold in one envelope and send it to us i found that very funny <laughs> yeah in india nobody will do that in india the ladies will take the gold and preside over it they will breathe be breathing down the neck of the jeweler as he is weighing that <laughs> they are not going to <laughs> they are not going to send it in an envelope and wait for some money to come in the, in the post <laughs> we don't do that you sit there and say hey you're not you are you're tilting the balance come on make it straight like this so so this is what it is so the gold you can say is 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 in the form of the ornament while not losing anything correct while not undergoing a change but here that argument is not valid like okay i had a brick of gold and then i made 1 million gold ornaments and now the brick is gone brick may be gone in the form of brick but really speaking the gold is still there that is how we have to take this okay so the golden ornament or to a certain extent even pot and clay here i don't like to use pot and clay because the clay is you know has the pot has to be uh, what is that put in that um, hot thing kiln it has to be baked and glazed mm. and all these things and then it's very diff different looking from clay but in the gold you see that the shine and everything is right there available the gold is available and the gold hasn't undergone any change oh but then it has become a nose ring as though yeah it has just been beaten and shaped it has become a bangle because some jeweler banged on it like this and it became a bangle then it became a chain and it became something else but really speaking the jew when you take the gold to the jeweler jeweler doesn't see the chain or the ornament jeweler becomes a vedantin yeah jeweler only sees gold and even if there are some gold uh, uh, i mean uh, precious stones studded in it he is not interested in that if you go to the jewelry store in india he will remove all that with a pair of those tweezers and then weigh the gold to see how much it is and then he will detract de de some some uh, subtract some things like little bit of copper is put to to make the because gold is too soft otherwise to harden it little bit of silver and copper is used he will uh, somehow intuitively know how much has been used and he will minus that before he gives the price of gold so therefore the gold alone is and this is a karana a cause that quote unquote manifests as the effect or becomes the effect without any loss without any change etc so it's a value addition and this kind of a karana cause is called vivarta upadana upada vivarta karana forget upad upadana means the, that which is uh, the raw material but don't worry about that we'll come to that later and warming up yeah so then <laughs> so here we have two kinds of causality correct one is that which turns into the effect which is what we find in the jagat mostly and the other it remains itself while manifesting as something else right so which kind of cause is brahma parinami or vivarta 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 vividham vartate it manifests as many vartate is vividham vartate iti vivarta parinami means that which undergoes a change so this brahman without undergoing any change has given rise to all these names and forms correct so that is what is this this sat sat means that with without that which doesn't have a second or a third or a fourth forget it that which is by itself and then and then what that <coughs> sat alone is it sentient or insentient sentient sentient how do you know it's uh, that sat is sentient i'm thinking ah because i can say i am sentient <laughs> if you are insentient sat is also insentient 
This I can easily say. If you say, no, 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 I beg to differ, I am sentient. Okay, therefore, Sat is also sentient. So that Sat, which is a sentient Sat, which is, and that sentiency is without boundary again. Because the Sat is without boundary, sentiency is also without boundary. That brings us to the next word, Jnanam. That Jnanam is sentiency without any limits. Jnanam here is a, it's, 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 it's both, it's Ishvara and Jiva because that which says I am is that Sat alone which is a conscious Sat and there is only one source of consciousness that is Ishvara. You know parading in this body called which, which I call my. This is very interesting. And then finally Anantam removes the limitations from the words Satyam and Jnanam. Yeah, because sentient means knowledge, you know, knowledge, sentient. Knowledge means knowledge of what? Because the mm. word, the verb to know is a transitive verb. Mm. You know, if you say, I sit, nobody says, sit what? Correct? Mm -hmm. But if you say, I eat, what do you eat? What are you eating? I know, what do you know? Right? So it's a transitive verb. Bring back all your memories of... Uh, Elementary school grammar here. Transitive verb means that which has needs something else to complete it. <clears throat> so when you say no, no means what? What do you know? Then if I say I know flower, I know pot, I know clay, I know gold, then you become what? Nowhere. Nowhere. Pot becomes what? No. Known. So here is the oneness already. There is nowhere known split. Right? Mm -hmm. So where is this oneness in the word Jnanam? The oneness is because that which morphs, that morphing into the knower known is also as though. Because the flower is Jnanam. Flower is knowledge. That, that knowledge which can morph into knower and known. And that knowledge which doesn't need a knower to know. <laughs> Very beautiful. That knowledge which doesn't, need, in other words, that knowledge which doesn't need a head for it to be contained in. That knowledge which is never divided. I divide it because I relate to each and every discrete thing in the universe as a separate entity. And this is what the third verse is all about. Nikhilani Karanani, we'll come to that, but we need a little background first. Nikhilani Karanani means, I see many, many causes. Nikhilani means all of them. Karanani, you know, causes, uh, which are uh, plural. So I see many causes. I don't see that one thing, correct? So therefore what? I am the one who is the, this jiva. The jiva is the one making this split between the knower and the known. Because the jiva relates to the jagat. As what? Other. Knower and known other than me. Everything is other than me, other than me, other than me. So I, the jiva, relate to the jagat as two. Yes. Duality. Correct? And this is what becomes a block in this knowledge because I also want to relate to Ishwara in that way. <laughs> yeah. I also want to relate to Ishvara as something other than myself and it becomes a block even before I start searching for Ishvara, the search itself is compromised because I am looking for the other. Instead of looking at the first letter of Ishvara which is what? Oh. I. I look everywhere except at this I. Yeah. This is the whole kind of a, this is the whole thing which is talked about in verse number 3. So these sages, Dhyana Yoga Anugataha, Santaha, they were contemplating what they knew in line with the teachings. Shrutim Anusritya Gataha, you know, Dhyana Anugataha. Then Apashyan, they saw. Past, simple past, plural. Apashyan, what did they see? What did they see? You know, Devatma Shaktim. That this Brahman alone, which is what? Which is a latent uh, 
reality, satyam, jnana, manantam, this unbound reality, this consciousness is incapable of acting. They saw that. Because that I, which is the truth of the body-mind sense complex and which is the whole, which, which informs the whole universe, that all pervasive I needs something or needs to undergo a tra an as though transformation because how did all this come from that one thing we need an explanation and this is what again if we go down the satyam jnana manantam root from the taittiriya upanishad tasmat va etasmat atmanah akashat sambhutah akashat vayuhu vayoho agni agne rapah adbhyat prithivi prithivyam oshadaya oshadaya oshadibhyo annam annat purusha that purusha which was talked about in verse number 2 that out of this atma out of this i alone has come the five elements akasha from the, the space has come air, you know, you go from the subtlest to the grossest. So you start with space and end with earth. From the earth came the trees, vegetation, and the, from vegetables came food. Upanishad says, not me. Yeah, <laughs> from the vegetables has come the food. Oshadhi means from the trees and the vegetation. And then what? Annam. And from the food that the person eats has come this Purusha. Which Purusha? The first one that we talked about. The one who is locked in this citadel of the body-mind-sense complex. Oh, but the small baby hasn't eaten anything. Yes, but its parents were eating. Mm. <laughs> Mother ate, you know. Father ate. Father's contribution is there. Mother's contribution is there. They were eating the food. So from the food has come this being called Purusha. And this is, this is the whole kind of a trajectory. But then uh, everywhere you have to say as though sky, as though earth, as though fire, as though air, as though. Because really that I did not undergo any kind of transformation. And if that I did not undergo any kind of transformation to quote unquote become the Jagat, that means the I hasn't become the Jagat, correct? But then what about this Jagat? How is this Jagat? Where is this Jagat? How, what is happening to this Jagat? And what is this Jagat that is all over the place? And this is what the sages saw. They saw a very powerful Shakti. Shakti means power. They saw a very potent Shakti, a potent power, invisible, avyakta, Maya. This Maya is not a small thing. Yeah, huge, very big. You know, and the the people who have composed songs have seen Maya as the the consort of Brahma, really speaking. Parabrahma Jaya. You know, Jaya means consort. So in a sense, the feminine aspect as it were of Brahman. And so then of course we have to be very careful here. Mm -hmm. This Maya, where did she come from? Brahman. She has Brahman. spontaneous creativity inherent in Brahman. Inherent in Brahman. It cannot be a parallel reality like God and devil. Because this is this is not something we, we have to be very careful. Inherent means, again we have to go deeper into the word inherent. So if she was in Brahman, you know, then, then you have the locator-located relationship, you know. <laughs> this spot is inside this spot. But that also is not very uh, correct here. Aruchi it creates, not a proper explanation. So therefore we say that this Shakti is also as though, because the Shakti cannot be real. Because then the Jagat would become, which is the product of I, will become more real than I. Or will become a parallel reality to this I. Then what happens to our non-duality? Bye bye. <laughs> That's what happens. So this is all, this is all beautifully written in verse number 3. Devatma Shaktim Apashyan. They saw this, they were able to penetrate through this, the, 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 the truth of this Shakti. And that this truth of this Shakti is not an ordinary Shakti. It's a potent Shakti, but it is not other than Brahman. It is not, you know, it is, it is Kalpita Shakti. It is the power of Brahman. Kalpita means as though. It's an as though Shakti which is 
the power of Brahman. And even to say power of Brahman, it's like saying Rahu's head. Rahu means all head. So how can you say Rahu's head? Rahu is a pl shadow planet, you know. Rahu ho shiraha, Rahu's head. Rahu is all head. You know, so really speaking, you cannot say power of Brahman. Brahman is power. That Jnanam, in order for it to quote unquote become many, it took the help, as it were, this is all within heavy quotes, of a, of a very potent power. And that power I can understand because I have that same creativity. Correct? You have that same creativity. Oh, but I am not very creative. What about in your dream? You are very creative. You dream all kinds of things. <laughs> you put together your knowledge, your jnana, your sat. You give your satta to everything in the dream. So even if you dream of animate and inanimate things, you know, if you say you are having a party in the dream, and then who is, you know, who, who are the friends in the dream? You. You have given the friends a body, your own knowledge, your own being has given the friends the body in the dream. And you have given yourself a body, you are also there in the dream. And then somebody is, you know, serving, they have brought potluck, one of them has brought samosas or something. Samosas are inanimate or animate? Inanimate. Hmm. <laughs> Insentient or sentient? Insentient. Inanimate. So the inanimate samosas, where did they come from? You, the animate you, <laughs> is inhabiting the inanimate samosas, the chaklis, whatever you have. Little, you know, fritters and things, you know, chips and everything. Dip is also you, chip is you, chip is you, dip is you, samosa is you, you know, sandwich is you. Everything is you in this. And the people are you, you of course are you. And then if there are tables and chairs, the props, that is also you. And this is called dream. So in dream there is only you, correct? And how come no one asked the question, how did I become so many in dream? <laughs> so when you don't ask that question, you know, where did this dream come from? Nobody asked that question. We take it for granted. And then what? And then of course the dream has to have an ending, correct? What is the ending? Alarm clock rings. In the dream? No, outside the dream. <laughs> Outside the dream, the Jagat alarm clock rings. What happens to the dream? It gets folded. Yeah. Where? Where does it go? The same place where the snake rope went. Yeah, rope snake, where it went, that's where the dream goes. <laughs> where does it go? It goes back to you. From you it came, by you it is sustained, unto you it folds up. The srishti of the dream, the, the creation of the dream, you are the creator in relation to the dream. Sthiti, the sustenance of the dream, and then the taking back of the dream you are doing. Of course in an inhibited way, because this is maya within maya. Correct? Mm -hmm. Your maya comes under, you know, his maya, so therefore your maya is a little, you know, Needs a little elbow room all the time. But you can understand that this maya, it's not very difficult to understand. And this creative shakti, you multiply this to the power of infinity. And then you see that all these things that we see and take ever so seriously. We see the trees, so many trees, you know, you can get lost in them. And then even in one kind of particular species of tree, there are so many subspecies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you take Devadaru, that's one kind of a tree that grows in India. It's called the tree of the gods. Devadaru, very medicinal. And in, in that Devadaru, that's a, that Latin name is also Devadaru. Maybe it's Devadaras, I don't know. And this Devadaru has six other species. And inside the subspecies, there are certain other regional variations. The western Devadaru and the eastern one and the northern one and the southern one, they all behave slightly differently. And within each subspecies, there are certain other variations. Within each regional variation, there are other, so, you know, climate variations based on where they grow. And Devadaru is a very hardy tree. It can even grow inside, in between the concrete crack, it will grow sometimes. 
so you see and it depends on where it grows and how it adapts it creates for itself new hybrids and new species and so what is this tree really this is maya this mm. is maya this is just like you see the effect you don't see the cause where is maya you cannot see because the cause is latent it's a latent invisible shakti you don't see maya creating a sunset you only see the sunset you don't see maya creating all these subspecies of the trees you only see the subspecies and then you have to deal with documenting them and seeing what they do and which which species are more medicinal than others you have to do that then you don't see maya in operation you only see the effects and then another thing i mean this bubbles the mind what is tree you know what is a tree a plant that which has treeness tree let us say <laughs> so that which has treeness is a tree so where is this treeness Hmm. Where is this treeness? Is it in the tree? <laughs> you cannot say it's in the tree because I just told you that which has treeness is a tree. So is it out of the tree? How can treeness be in non-tree? <laughs> so a tree, you know, that which has treeness is a tree. So the tree for it to have treeness must not already be a tree, correct? Hmm. so then if the treeness is located where is it located in the tree or the non tree non tree non tree this is maya and what is that non tree brahman yeah brahman which manifests as a tree its essential nature is non tree it manifests as a jiva its essential nature is non jiva it manifests as this that or the other its essential nature is neither this nor that nor another so the the, the mediating power here is maya devatma shakti deva means that which is sentient dyotanatmakatva self revealing that self revealing shakti of that atma alone which is paramatma same thing devatma shaktim apashyan they were able to see through this multiplicity of the jagat the duplicity of this jagat they were able to see through why because they saw that they, that shakti swagunaihi nigudham nigudham hidden swagunaihi by its own gunas what are the gunas satva satva rajas 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 tamas you have to say satva rajas and tamas this is the the you know the primary colors of maya if you give lady maya goddess maya a, a palette in the hand you know they say that everything has come from three colors what are the three primary colors red, red, yellow. red yellow and blue all the whole spectrum the whole rainbow of colors the prism has come from these three things red blue yellow you you combine red and blue you get purple you combine yellow and you know blue you get green like this you get you know you combine red and yellow you get various shades of orange and this is what is this uh, you know uh, this whole thing has come from these three colors the world of the the seen world so treeness is one of those is tertiary to those three treeness i'll come to that so the 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 three gunas sattva which is a certain kind of a, sattva means a shantata a godliness a a a kind of a meditative easy going quality goes with the flow quality sattva rajas activity and then finally tamas inertia this these are the palette of maya mm. so when the maya mixes these colors 
you get various hues of personalities and things. Yeah. So when I talked about treeness, that's a slightly different point. Treeness means that which gives the tree a particular thing that you and I recognize as a tree, that it belongs to Brahman. And what does Maya do? That Maya just helps manifest that treeness onto various things that we recognize as tree. And within the tree also there can be sattva, rajas, tamas. That's a different discussion. Mm -hmm. So these are the three various palettes with which the whole jagat is, is, is woven. You can say that there are three different schemes. Sattva skin, rajas and tamas and the whole, you know, this Brahman is the, this is a better metaphor. So the Brahman is a tapestry, a canvas. Sattva, rajas and tamas are embroidery threads. And Maya is the same stress. This needlework lady who uses these three colors in various combinations and makes this grand jagat on this tapestry called Brahman. This un, unending sentient consciousness. The truth of sattva, rajas, tamas is really what? Satyam jnana mm -hmm. <laughs> So the palette colors, even though we say, sat, what is that? You know, the sattva, rajas, tamas are the palette colors or the, the, the thread colors but really that which makes it a thread, if you take away the, the hues, if you put it in water and all the hues come off, what makes the, what holds the sattva is what? Satyam Jnana Manantam. What holds the tamas is what? Satyam Jnana Manantam. What holds the rajas is sattva, Satyam Jnana Manantam. This Brahman. Without being sattva, it manifests as sattva. Without being rajas, free of rajas, it manifests as rajas. Free of tamas, it manifests as tamas. So that which is Brahman is neither sattva nor rajas nor tamas. But by the same breath we have to say, sattva, rajas, tamas do not have any being without Brahman. Yeah. So this whole tapestry is woven and inside the tapestry you find sun, rise, sunset, you find stars, you find galaxies, you find people laughing. You find people studying Gita, you find people studying Shvetashvata Upanishad, all in this tapestry they are studying. And then you find people, you know, not engaged in sattvic <laughs> pursuits like study of Upanishad. What are they doing instead? They are jumping up and down, wondering what to do next. They are restless, they are arguing, they are argumentative. They are running marathons, whatever it is, because both Rajas and Tamas have their good and uh, not so good sides, their shadow sides. Rajas means activity, but on the flip side of activity is what? Restlessness, anger, fear. Tamas, inertia, a very restful state, supposedly, but on the flip side is what? Sloth, laziness, <laughs> non-motivation, no motivation to do anything. Just sit in one place the whole day, not do anything. This is, you know, this is what is called tamas. And so, this, so the various aspects of these, the, the embroidery needle is constantly going up and down in this whole tapestry. This huge story of the universe. And the universe is what? Nothing but the schemes of these three archetypes of, of nature, of maya. Maya's stuff is this sattva, rajas and tamas. And so we don't see beyond the threads. Who goes to see satyam, jnana, manantam beyond the threads? Only these kinds of sages. <laughs> Who even desires to, to penetrate the, the, the whole tapestry? Only very few people endowed with adhikaritvam. Adhikaritvam means the qualifications to gain this, to see beyond this. Uh, what is what meets the eye? Otherwise, what meets the eye is sound, color, light. It's like a light and sound show. You know, when I was young, there were some these uh, 
places you could go to, they were called singing fountains. Mm. Singing fountains. And so they would have, uh, you know, all these fountains with colors and the, the, the fountains would respond to the sound waves. Sa, re, ga, ma, pa, like that. And they would go up and down. And, you know, and as a child I was very fascinated. Like, oh, this is, you know, amazing. How did this happen? And then, of course, as I grew older, I understood that it was all controlled by one button <laughs> inside. <laughs> one switch, you know, which, which operated the whole entire thing, the light and sound fountain show. So similarly, this light and sound show of the tapestry of the Jagat, which keeps on being knitted, being embroidered, uh, in front of our very eyes, it's being embroidered. We get fascinated like that small child in the sound, in, in, the, in the obvious. We get caught in the light and sound show. Mind you, it's not all good. Yeah, good means pleasant. <laughs> it, it's also unpleasant because there is a tsunami somewhere, somebody is crying, somebody is dying, somebody is upset, somebody is being born, you know, which is also can, can be unpleasant. Birth is not always easy. So, so therefore, all this, this whole light and sound show is a trap. It's a visual trap. It's a trap for all the senses. Mm. For this lowly little Purusha, already caught in this citadel and wanting to come out, unable to come out, getting further imprisoned by the light and sound show of Goddess Maya weaving this Jagat right in front of our very eyes. It's so beautiful. And she, while she is doing this, what is the big deal for her to, to make a nice big robe with lot of gold glitter sequins? And she puts that robe on Brahman. And then we say, oh, Ishwara. <laughs> and then what? She makes another tattered robe full of holes and, you know, like those jeans which the teenagers wear these days. <laughs> <laughs> More holes than jeans, holy jeans. So she makes a tattered robe, puts it again on the same Brahman and everybody says, Oh, poor Jeeva, <laughs> who is a perpetual beggar. Oh Lord, please give me a Mercedes Benz. Oh Lord, please let me have color TV. Oh Lord, I want this, I want, I want, I want, I want. It becomes that one tune. We have an instrument called Ek Tara. It's, it's a one-stringed instrument. Yeah, and it can only play naturally, it can only play one tune. What does it say? I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. <laughs> Otherwise, it will another variation. If you set it to a different note, it will say, Help me, help me, help me, tahi, trahi maam, pahi maam, save me, help me. This is the cry of mercy from that same Brahman because of Maya dressed in tatters. The dress itself is seen to be the person. You, you you go to a masquerade ball, correct? This is what is the like Halloween, which just went by. In Halloween, what happens? You dress as various uh, creatures and people. And the idea is what? You know you are that, but you know who you are, but you enjoy wearing this mask, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is what this teaching is going to do. That is what this Upanishad promises to do. To, 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 to tell the truth of this garb, that this garb is, is really an as though garb, which you can enjoy wearing, even if it's, you know, if somebody is dressed as a pirate, they don't start feeling guilty, oh, I don't know how many people I killed, and I don't know what I did, and oh, uh, you know, they enjoy, you know, swashbuckling their sword and going like this, you see small children, they enjoy it. <laughs> And why do they enjoy it? Because they know they are not that thing which they are projecting. And this is the way to, to, for, to understand that one is not in the grip of Maya because we have to see the truth of this Sattva Rajas Tamas. We have to see the call, the bluff of these schemes, these tapestries which have, you know, made this whole Jagat. And what have we done? What is our mistake? We have gone and completely bought into the light and sound show. And in the light and sound, you can ask, or you can also say, taste show. So many restaurants. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's like a mela. It's a taste show. And then a smell show. So many, it's like going into a botanical garden. So many different flowers. So many different smells. So wonderful. Or going into a perfume shop. You come out all confused. <laughs> because your olfactory nerves are assailed by all these flowery scents. And you don't know what it is. But you have to see the truth of this. And the truth of this is in the thing itself. It's not outside. It cannot be. Because that thing is not separate from that. So everything is just, is that one thing alone manifesting in a different name and form. Word and meaning, word and meaning. This whole jagat is a bunch of words and meanings. That's all it is. Word and meaning, word and meaning. Donut, word and meaning. <laughs> you may say that's donut, maybe word and meaning. Wait till it just, as soon as you say aha, you see it and you say aha. But wait till you swaha, <laughs> then it's no longer word and meaning. What? It becomes, it, it emerges as a spare tire. That is also a word and meaning. <laughs> word and meaning, word and meaning, word and meaning, word and meaning. The whole jagat is a well embroidered, well orchestrated show of lights, sounds, smells, sights, tastes, words, meanings, name and form. Nama Rupa, Nama Rupa, Nama Rupa, nothing else other than Nama Rupa. And this is told in the Drikdrishya Viveka which we studied a long time ago. It says everything in the world has five components. Asti, first one. Asti means is. We already told you that the is belongs to Ishvara, correct? Brahman. Bhati means comes to light, shines. Asti, first component. Bhati, second component. Third component, Priyam. He is attractive to me. What do you mean is attractive to me? How can you say all the things in the Jagat are attractive to me? They are not. There are many things including the in-laws and the outlaws that are not attractive to me. You can say that. But their absence, is it attractive to you or not? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is what Priyam is. That I am searching for this Priyam all the time. So Astibhati Priyam, the first three components of every single thing in the Jagat. And then what? Nama, name, it has a, everything has a name. And then finally, Rupa. What is Rupa? Form. Form. These are the five components of everything in the Jagat. And then there is a small print in the second verse. What is that? Adhyatrayam, the first three, belong to Brahman. <laughs> Asti Bhati Priyam is nothing other than Sat Chit Ananda Satyam Jnana Mananta. That's all it is. The first three belong to Brahman. Oh, then what is left? <laughs> Nama Rupa, that belongs to the Jagat. Jagat Rupam Atodvayam Adhyatrayam Brahma Rupam First three belong to Brahman. The last two belong to the Jagat. So what is this Jagat? Nama Rupa. Word and meaning, name and form. That's all it is. And this name and form we take so seriously upon getting up. Mind you, in sleep, is there Jagat or not? Yes. No. Yeah. I'll wait for to, for there to uh, unanimous consensus to emerge in the classroom. Is there jagat in sleep? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Where? Kutra asti. Yeah, but that jagat is here. You are absolutely correct. But that is sleeping. So where is the jagat? Kutra asti, asti jagat. In sleep. Where is the Jagat? And this, in fact, it's beautiful. The second class is going to deal with this only. Uh, you know, today somehow the, 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 the like, like flowing rivers, like, you know, which come together, Alakananda and Mandakini, the two tributaries of the Ganga, they, they, they meet in, in a place called Deva Prayag. Prayaga means the place of meeting of rivers. In Deva Prayag, they meet. So like that, today we are having a confluence of the, of the verses from here and in the next class, it often happens. Very beautiful. So this, this, so where is the jagat in sleep? Where is the jagat? Is there jagat in sleep? No. 
In sleep there is no jagat. Then where, then upon waking, jagat means what? The awareness of myself in real, the other. Jagat means other. Including this body, mind, sense complex, jagat. So that awareness of the other is jagat. Really jagat means what? Jayate gachati. Jagat. The, the definition of Jagat is itself interesting. Jayate is born, Gachati is gone. <laughs> that is Jagat. Jayate Gachati iti Jagat. So where is the Jagat when you sleep? What happens to your credit card problems? What happened to relationship problems? What happened to children? Especially teenagers in sleep. <laughs> what happens to all the things you do not like? What happens to all the health issues that you are aware you have? What happens to all the things that you know, that you are dreading? What happens to that is the Jagat. So samsara, there is no samsara in sleep. And therefore we say there is no Jagat in sleep. So that which demanifests, when you go into a place of demanifestation, when that awareness goes into a causal state of demanifestation, it just knows enough to wake up in the morning and say, I slept so well, I don't know anything. I didn't know anything. That much awareness is there, but no more than that. So that demanifestation means what? The I of the I, which is the owner of the body, the ahankara, the owner of the body, mind, sense complex, resolves into Ishvara. That is the sleep. So when I am resolved into Ishvara, it is called Laya. Where is the Jagat? There is no Jagat, really speaking. Jagat has gone, born and gone, born and gone. And so therefore what? When, that, when there is no observer, the observed is only in relation to the observer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the sound is in relation to the listener. Sight is in relation to the seer. When the seer has resolved, the, the hearer has resolved. So the object of sight and hearing, which is this light and sound show, of what use is this? Who is it for? It's all for me. Really. Because when I wake up, the birds are chirping for me. Yeah. The leaves in the autumn are falling for me. Because I am the one seeing them and enjoying them. The rain is falling for me. Well, I'm not enjoying that, but still it is part of the season. <laughs> the sun is trying to come out, even in the, rain, in, in the rainy season, for me in the winter. The days are getting shorter for me because it's all, the whole Jagat has no basis without you, the observer. What a thought, what a great thing. And that Adhishthata, next line, line 3. Ekaha Tishthati Adhishthata. Tishthati means abides. That Adhishthata means what? Adhishthata means the one who oversees the whole Embroidery of Mother Maya. Mother Maya's embroidery, the one who oversees and who says, Oh, little bit of waves over there. Oh, here is full moon. There should be new moon. What are you doing? You know, do this, do that. In fact, they are one. That's what I said. All our devatas are happily married. We don't have any separation between the feminine, the masculine, the raw material and the maker. The raw material and the maker are one and the same. That which is the effect resolves into the cause. The cause, it doesn't have another cause, a causeless cause. That is called Adhishthata. Adhishthatra. Adhishthatra means the overseer of everything, which is this I, which is revealed as Ishvara. Right now, not yet understood, but really there is only one I who oversees the Jagat. And when you say Ishvara in the form of laws oversees the Jagat and I for the time being in the form of the on the on the level of the transactional reality I in the form of what the the observer oversee the Jagat right yeah so all these this beautiful song and dance show light and sound show of goddess Maya is for who you the observer Oh, but I am caught in the Maya. No. <laughs> you are not caught. Even if you believe you are caught, add two words after that. What would they be? Uh, 
Ez dó. Ez dó. Ez kor. Ez dó free. Ez dó bound. Ez dó liberated. Ez dó meditating. Ez dó distracted. Ez dó, ez dó, ez dó, ez dó, ez dó. All the way it is as dó. Ek tishthati adhishthata it says. And what did they see? They saw this shakti. They also saw what is behind this shakti. They did not get completely, uh, what's the word for it? They did not get fooled by this shakti. They did not get fooled by the shakti. They saw what was behind it. And what was that that was behind it? Behind that it was hidden. Yaha karanani nikhilani tani. All these small, small causes. Kalatma along with time. Yeah. And beginning with uh, beginning with time and ending with I. Kala Atma. Beginning with time and ending with I. All of these causes are just one Ishvara. Causeless cause. They all resolve into the causeless cause. Time resolves. This body-mind-sense complex and the ahankara, the I-notion resolves. All there is, is this one Ishvara. And some very interesting verses are coming up. We will see that. Next Friday, we don't have class because it is uh, Thanksgiving. Instead, we have three days of talks on Dhanyashtakam. Very beautiful text. Um, so you can come and that is at the 2222 Coburg Road. It will also be offered online. But not on this classroom. You go to the other classroom. It will be offered on that live stream classroom, you can do that. That is Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 9 to 12. Okay? Om Purnamada 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 Chate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashyate Om Shanti 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 Harari Om Shri Gurudyo Namaha Harari Om Any questions? Yeah. If, if the raw material is, all, and including the three gunas, yes. is not ultimately different yes. from Brahman, yes. then only metaphor that can come to my mind is like if he's making some mudras and he doesn't have the fingers in the same position, he has to be these changes have to be his yeah it's like the dance of gesture. dance of nataraja mm -hmm. as long as nataraja is dancing the world is in motion jagat is there and so the dynamic aspect of this creation is nothing but movement it's all movement everything is constantly moving you can mm -hmm. imagine it as mudras you can imagine it as as the the dreadlocks which are horizontal <laughs> for Nataraja. The dreadlocks are not, you know, yeah. not like his are like this, but for him they are horizontal yeah. because of the movement. So that movement alone is this whole Jagat. So when you touch anything, you're really touching him. Yeah, whatever but you touch whatever is Ishvara. And you touch you. Ishvara. That's why we don't need, we, we do anganyasa. We, we, we even worship ourselves in, in the whole thing when we do the whole worship. Mm -hmm. We start with atma, you know, atmanam proksya, deham proksya. We start with this body. We start with purificatory, you know, things for this body and then you worship what is within the body. Mm -hmm. Body is worshipped, mind is worshipped, senses are worshipped because it's not the body that is worshipped. It's Ishvara that is worshipped in the form of this body. That's why we don't have anything which is a non-secular uh, philosophy. Everything is sacred. Everything is sacred. Starting with your own body, everything is sacred. There's not even a single thing that is non-sacred. Very beautiful. Yeah. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.